to quote myself from the mouth of Stan, I want to saw my head off, throw it out that window, and jump out through the hole. <laughs> I'm curious, Dana, what did you sort of look at from the first season and say, okay, these are things that we want to keep because they were great, and here are some things that we could do a little bit better and update, et cetera? That's a, that's a, that's a great question. Unfortunately, this is neither the time nor the place. Uh, no. Uh, I wrote uh, John and Janet into a, a, a gnarly little corner uh, in a cliffhanger ending at season one. Janet is trapped in the 1600s, about to get burned at the stake. So I thought, we should probably address that and not just, <laughs> just pick up the show like nothing happened. Well, with Stan... What a terrible answer that I, was. I, I was hoping for a little bit. You know, that was the most... Just William, more, like, that was more the most, goo. That was the most William F. Buckliest answer I could, <laughs> I could do. Right? To quote myself, from the mouth of Stan, I want to saw my head off, throw it out that window, and jump out through the hole. <laughs> as far as Stan as a character, why is he likable? Because he, you know, he's definitely a curmudgeon, uh, not exactly the most tolerant guy, and yet we do find ourselves really rallying around him and, and rooting for him. The reason Stan's, uh, you can reconcile his, his disparaging of everybody is because Dana lets him do the right thing. In the bottom of the ninth, when the bases are jacked and Stan comes out of the pen, you want him to be your closer. Yeah, that's a sports analogy, I'm assuming. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, yeah, Stan, Stan will save your life because he doesn't want to bitch to nobody. Closer to it. Okay. Well, okay, so Evie this season, last season it seemed like she got knocked out a few times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe every episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so what's, how much is she getting knocked out in season two versus like just, you know, again, like driving the action and becoming even more, because she is typically the smartest person in the room mm -hmm. and, and in the whole town. So what's happening with her in season two? Is she like more of a badass? Well, I think we can, if you want, Aaron, we can go super meta on this because I know we have uh, smart, engaged, meta type audiences uh, and say, what do you think happens based on the idea of Dana's level of guilt at what Dana Gould <laughs> did to the actress Janet Varney in the first season? Oh, what would your expectation be about season two? Just from a meta perspective, you're looking wow. down on it and you're like, he hates himself. She got uh, really messed up in a lot of episodes. Maybe there's less. Janet, to me, is like the female Harrison Ford. She's the action star of the show. She's, she's very rough and tough. And, and I wrote her a very hard, physically demanding season, and it was all done. And then in the first episode, it's 3 in the morning, and we were at a bug-infested swamp in the middle of Georgia where we had to let the snake wrangler clear the set before we went in. And Mick Ignis was vomiting black goo onto Janet's face through a pump. And I just went up to her and I went, I'm really, really, really sorry. Fully knowing that we had six more weeks of this. So uh, in season two, I lightened up the goo. And I will say, I put my money where my mouth is. The one person that gets the most goo this season, right here.